Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time. I'm Siddharth Vardarajan and joining me today for our conversation is Ambassador Cho Hyun, Ambassador of the Republic of Korea, South Korea as we all know it. Welcome to Rajya Sabha TV, sir. Good to be here talking with you. Uh, India-South Korea relations have been on the upward trajectory for the past three decades. And uh, we've seen a series of high-level bilateral visits. Uh, your president came to India in 2014. Our prime minister went to Seoul uh, last year. Uh, what would you consider uh, as the ambassador, as, as ambassador of uh, South Korea? Are the, uh, the new elements or the main elements of the bilateral relationship as we move forward? Well, um, our economic relationship has been strong, but um, uh, recently uh, I see that it's going to take off. So our relationship is led by our strong uh, economic relationship, but on top of that, as you rightfully mentioned, um, the visits of uh, high-level uh, government officials uh, is offering a new framework for the future relationship between our two countries. Uh, more concretely, when Prime Minister visited Korea uh, May last year, uh, he signed an agreement that is special strategic partnership agreement uh, together with our president, President Park geun -hye. This is uh, an agreement that uh, defines the future of our relationship, covering all different areas for our uh, deepened relationship. Right. Um, in terms of, you know, you're, you're saying it's about to take off, but if you look at the, at the numbers, mm -hmm. right, uh, the, there is a sense that India-Korea, the India-Korea relationship has not fully uh, accomplished uh, its promise. The numbers are impressive. Mm -hmm. Bilateral trade is uh, more than 15 or 16 billion dollars per annum. Uh, level of FDI from, from South Korea to India, about five or six billion dollars. It's impressive, but uh, much less than uh, uh, what India has in mind, say, with large, of course, China is a much larger economy, so is the US. But in terms of the potential, uh, surely there's scope for uh, doubling or trebling uh, trade and investment flows. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm not happy with the numbers we have now, uh, but I see uh, not just great potential, but there are also things that might turn out to be uh, great news. Uh, I cannot talk about them uh, at this stage, but there are many things in the pipeline. Uh, so that's why I'm saying that the economic relationship is about to take off. But uh, coming back to the achievements we have made, it is also uh, great. Um, a number of Korean companies which came to India have been quite successful. Uh, for instance, uh, Samsung uh, has established its own R&D center uh, employing 5,000 uh, Indian techies in Bengaluru and also over 2,000, again, very uh, highly uh, well-paid people in uh, Noida. Uh, it's remarkable for them that they ma uh, manufacture goods here, not just import uh, mobile phones and so on, but more importantly, they have been successful new gadget uh, uh, to develop. develop their new gadgets in India. So these are so these are full-fledged uh, research teams or, or, or tech teams uh, in in Noida and Bangalore. Correct. I have visited two places, and I was pleasantly surprised that they are uh, top of the world. Right. So so in a sense, this is if you will, an, an attempt to actually go up the value chain, because by, uh, if, if the initial phase is to simply sell mm -hmm. and the second phase is to make, uh, you're saying that Korean companies are quite bullish on perhaps developing the next generation of products through Indian research in India? Uh, correct. And uh, I was also about to say, uh, talk a little bit about their achievements. 
uh, Hyundai Motors, for instance, they produce uh, slightly over 600,000 automobiles a year. Uh, and one third of them are exported to uh, outside of India. That's uh, perfectly in line with the mega policy of make in India. Exactly. And uh, uh, where are the main, main markets for these cars? Uh, Middle, East Middle East and Africa right. and spreading out to some other parts of Europe. Right. Um, but I have been talking to many Korean businessmen that um, even small and medium sized companies can come to India and uh, invest in India and do business well in India because given the, uh, the idiosyncrasy of the Indian economy, it's multi-layered and uh, you don't have to be Samsung or Hyundai to uh, make money here in India. Uh, if you have some good system, technology and uh, passion, then you can come to India and uh, uh, make money. We've seen around the world in different countries, um, Australia, Japan, the United States, even China, uh, a great deal of enthusiasm or a certain bullishness about the Indian economy over the last two years. Uh, with the arrival of Prime Minister Modi and his emphasis on, on growth and development, uh, make in India that you mentioned, uh, there is a sense that investors in these countries uh, are much more optimistic about uh, India's growth prospects. Uh, this, I, I would imagine this sentiment is shared by, by Korean companies too that you interact with. Exactly. And uh, I have been uh, invited to a series of uh, business summits hosted by chief ministers of many states in India. And to me, it looks like that they are, there is a competition among states for foreign direct investment, which is very good. And as for many Korean companies, they are considering further investment in that context. And I believe uh, as I said earlier, not just big companies, uh, conglomerates, but small and medium-sized companies from Korea will surely come. But I advise them that they should uh, find the, a good partner to navigate uh, the difficulties embedded in the uh, Indian market, particularly at the uh, initial stage for them to settle down. But eventually, I think they will uh, be fine. Uh, uh, Ambassador Cho, you've been here for six months, so I, you may not uh, have a clear sense of what I'm going to ask you next. But you mentioned the difficulties that uh, are part of the system that Korean investors have to navigate their way through. To your mind, are these difficulties uh, cultural in the sense that peculiar to the Indian way of doing business, or are they institutional, linked in some way to the functioning of the state? Uh, in other words, uh, problems that you as a diplomat or Korean uh, companies as a whole want the government to make reforms uh, in a particular area. So can you tell us a little bit about the nature of these difficulties that uh, Korean companies may encounter if they come to India without a partner? We have high expectations on the uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, policies, mega policies, like uh, um, Make in India, Skill India, Smart India, Clean India, and so on. And uh, I'm convinced that these uh, new policies of opening and reforming your economy will bear fruit sooner than uh, uh, later. Uh, but I hear some complaints. Um, I'm not here to talk about all the complaints I hear from uh, Korean businessmen in India, but... Um, no, it would be useful to, to have a discussion on this, yeah. So right. Nevertheless, uh, sometimes uh, they come from some misunderstandings and uh, sometimes uh, they are to be sorted out uh, just like any other country as an investor. Uh, and we also uh, think that there are certain legacies of your uh, previous uh, economic policies that were centered on uh, rather socialist-oriented uh, policies. But uh, these are to be uh, changed, and we clearly 
uh, recognize uh, the government's will to reform them. And um, uh, people say that uh, they see clear differences. If I can push you a bit further, um, every, um, every country uh, that deals with India economically, uh, particularly the investor countries, have a wish list of things that they want to see. If you were to ask the Americans, for example, they would say uh, India should liberalize its investment norms and insurance and retail, uh, perhaps um, you know, uh, change the IP laws uh, the, you know, for pharmaceuticals and so on. Uh, what, what would you say are the uh, main expectations or the demands that Korean companies uh, make when they meet you about things that they would like changed in India? Well, to address uh, their problems, Prime Minister Modi uh, suggested when he was in Seoul to uh, install an office des specially designated uh, to resolve these problems in his office. So a uh, K-desk, Korea desk. So we are going to second two officials from my government to in, uh, pr Indian government. Uh, who can be resolving, trying to resolve all the problems. So, uh, But it's been a year that, that hasn't taken off yet, right, that, uh, uh, that proposal? It's been a full year for us to yes. prepare okay. all the details for a uh, smooth running of this office. K-Desk, okay. Yes, and it, it is to be uh, launched very soon. And I'm pretty sure that uh, it will uh, improve the situation dramatically. Right. But going back to your question, um, I hear that uh, Korean businessmen here in India, um, they say that um, sometimes they are rather surprised uh, to unexpected changes of policies. Um, not almost anymore by, uh, at the level of union government, but sometimes state, state level. So predictability it seems to me uh, very important. Right. So you mean like changes in tax rules or land use rules? Uh, and so on, and yes, so on. exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's a fair point. Uh, if Samsung and Hyundai are the poster boys of uh, successful Korean entrepreneurship in India, mm -hmm. uh, the POSCO project in many ways mm -hmm. is, uh, is uh, the negative story. Um, in the sense that plans that were announced uh, and a project that was spoken very highly of got mired in controversy uh, and finally never got off the ground. Uh, to your mind, um, what were some of the mistakes that uh, led to, you know, from the Korean side, for example, from the Indian side, that uh, what are the lessons that could be learned from the, uh, from the POSCO, from the negative example of POSCO? Well, uh, the question itself shows the problems. Um, it's a kind of uh, brandishing. But POSCO has been quite successful in uh, its management, I mean investment in some other parts of India. Right. And as for uh, this specific project the you mentioned the Odisha, the, in the Orisha, Orisha. Yes. Uh, well, unfortunately, it has not taken off uh, almost 10 years after the decision. And now it's been formally abandoned, right, I think, uh, more or less? More or less. Yes. I visited Orisha uh, two weeks ago, and um, I had a chance of meeting with the chief minister and some other businessmen. And when I was asked about this question again, uh, I made it clear that the Korean government will honor the decision of POSCO which will be made, uh, quite understandably, based on their commercial uh, considerations. But um, as this has been a symbol of some sort of failure or uh, disappointment uh, on India, I think it's better to move on. And uh, on our part, we have uh, many successful stories of POSCO in other uh, areas of India. And also we have so many other companies, uh, even a small company uh, from Korea, uh, which deals with um, uh, 
resolving air pollutions have been quite successful in West Bengal. Yeah. Uh, w one of the thrust areas we saw uh, recently, the uh, Korea partnered India at the Maritime Summit, uh, in the whole sphere of the maritime, uh, mm -hmm. maritime area, Korea has very strong skills when it comes to shipbuilding, uh, port construction, port management. Uh, is that uh, one area that you hope as ambassador to see greater, greater uh, bilateral push? Yes, indeed. In fact, it goes back to February when we had this uh, Make in India week in Mumbai. I had the honor of uh, greeting Prime Minister Modi in the Korea booth. And, uh, well, he seemed to be quite pleased uh, to have this Korea booth. And he looked around and suddenly he said to me that uh, Korea should do more uh, and um, uh, Korea should make a little Korea in India. And in that context, um, he invited uh, many Korean companies to the upcoming uh, Maritime Summit, Maritime Summit uh, in April in Mumbai. And two weeks afterwards, I was um, told that uh, Korea was designated as the single uh, partner country. Um, well, it was an honor, but at the same time, I was able to feel the high expectation. And I did my best uh, to invite as many Korean companies as possible. Altogether, uh, Korean private companies and uh, institutions and even some um, uh, think tanks all together, more than 70 of them came to attend this fair. But more importantly, our uh, Minister of, of uh, Fisheries, Maritime Affairs uh, came to uh, India uh, and um, had a courtesy call on Prime Minister Modi and transmitted um, the uh, special letter personal letter of our President Park, and he also had a meeting uh, with his counterpart. And uh, they talked about a number of issues. That would be with Mr. Gadkari, is it? Correct, yeah. correct. And they signed, also signed the Memorandum of Understanding on future cooperation between the two governments on this area, which covers uh, shipbuilding uh, and dredging, management of port, and fisheries, and even including uh, tourism. Right. So uh, we are going to have uh, this collaboration in the wild, wide areas uh, that are related with sea. So I, I was very glad to observe these uh, developments in Mumbai uh, two weeks ago. So, so, so there might be concrete uh, projects involving uh Shipbuilding collaboration between some of your major shipbuilders and Indian yards is that a, is that a, a, a concrete prospect? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, as I said earlier, I am expecting yes. uh, good announcements to be made at any. Uh, okay, so minute. you've given us a good clue. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not in a position to disclose anything I heard right. about it because right. again, uh, they are in the pipelines. Right, of course. But I was very, uh, I felt very optimistic about the future cooperation in these areas. But uh, this is, the, our cooperation uh, in the economic areas is not limited to such things. Korea was also invited to uh, the upcoming Goa Film Festival uh, in November as a partner country. And, um, Although I enjoy um, many uh, films from India, uh, I'm also glad that there are many good films produced in Korea. In fact, Korea and India are the only countries uh, which produce uh, their domestic films that occupy more than half of their domestic uh, market. And, um, I was just thinking uh, that if our film industries can collaborate with each other, there will be a great synergy. Is there much, is there much of a market for um, Bollywood movies in, uh, in Korea? 
Oh, yes. Yeah? Right before my departure from uh, Korea to India, I saw uh, the movie PK uh, in cinemas in Korea. Dub dubbed into Korean, obviously, uh, or with subtitles? No, no, subtitles. Subtitles, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, the three Khans are well known right. uh, in Korea as well. Right. Right. Yeah. But um, turning to sort of people to people contact or cultural relations, uh, I would say, as a layperson, somebody who hasn't, who's not a specialist on India-Korea relations, that um, the amount of uh, educational exchanges, cultural exchanges, even tourism, is uh, is much less than what it could be. Mm -hmm. um, I think Indians who have become very familiar with Korea as an economic partner, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps still don't look at Korea as uh, a tourist destination. Uh, or even a place to go to study. Um, do you think that there is scope for that to change or is uh, geography and language uh, a barrier that's too difficult to overcome? No, not really. Um, it's, uh, I must say, as Korean ambassador, uh, this is the hidden treasure for Indian uh, tourists. Uh, last year, uh, it was slightly, I mean, the tourists from India to Korea was slightly less than 150,000 people. Uh, and I'm sure, pretty sure, that uh, it will be over 150,000 this year. Could you give, by, by way of comparison, how many Japanese or, or, uh, Chinese? or, or Chinese, or even Malaysians? Uh, uh, or in, uh, go, I, I do not have an right. exact figure, but right. uh, uh, we cannot compare right. with them because right. Uh, for instance, the flights, direct flights. We used to have only six direct flights between our two countries. Three to uh, uh, Delhi and three to Mumbai. We have agreed uh, to expand it to 19. But in case of China, over 500 a week. So, uh, it, I am convinced that there is a great potential for us. The uh, task for us is how to realize it. Right. I have spoken to many Koreans while I was uh, in Korea briefly for a chief of missions conference in March that we should build our infrastructure, own infrastructure in India. Um, that is to say that, look, India will become G7, hopefully, in the near future. And think about what we have in India in comparison with what we have uh, in China. Uh, how big is our embassy? How many consulates we have? How many exchange pro uh, uh, students programs we have? That was the point I was making. What's the total number of Indian students in, uh, in South Korea now? Oh, very, very few. Right. Uh, less than 200. Right. And mostly but doing just language, I guess. Huh? Uh, that is quite true. Yeah. But uh, there are uh, hopeful signs. There are um, over 1,000 Indian techies working for Samsung uh, in Suwon, for instance. But on our part as well, it's um, less than... Uh, uh, expected. We have our Korean students in America uh, at this moment, 70,000. Only next to China and India, we are the third country to send uh, uh, many Koreans, I mean students in America. And in China, we still have 50,000 students. Really? Yes. And Here in, in, in India, India, how many do you have? 300. Okay. Well, we are not wholly responsible. I always say it. Um, India, I talk to you journalist. India has some problem of promoting your country. Yes. Uh, I don't know why, but I don't see good news from uh, Western media about India. Uh, you have to make it, I mean, you, have to, you are in need of a game changer. Uh, but my point is that there are some reasons that uh, many uh, more students do not come to India. So I was, uh, when I was back in Korea, I urged 
young uh, students to come to India and study India, and you will surely uh, get jobs. Because we have currently at around 500 Korean companies in India. But uh, when these mega projects of investment from Korea to India is realized, which are currently on the, in the pipeline, then there will be uh, soon uh, 1,000 Korean companies, right. 2,000 Korean companies. And there will be in need of specialists, um, yes, exactly. some Korean students who have spent some time in India. Exactly. So I'm sure uh, that there will be more Korean right. students. Right. And that's the reason I, uh, why I visited uh, many uh, university campuses and visiting uh, faculty members of uh, universities to uh, nudge them for uh, having special relationship with many Korean companies for exchange of uh, a students program right. and faculty members right. And, right. and so on. Uh, on that note, Ambassador Cho, we're completely out of time, so we'll have to leave it there. But thank you so much for joining us uh, on the show this evening. Thank you, it was very glad I was very glad. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of Indian Standard Time. Do join us again next week with another guest. Thank you for watching.